Hello, everyone. I'm Muni. Today, I'm very glad to take the conference of Code Blue. And today, I will introduce the topic of uh, how we fast and exploit the Apple Core, uh, the passive framework and the contest, contest enlightenment framework into the Apple Core and the exploit. We have exploited the vulnerabilities and the root the Mac OS operating system of EI Caption version. OK. This is my agenda. First, I will introduce uh, a little about me and my partner. And second, I will introduce our passive fasting framework <coughs> about how we design and uh, design the approach and consideration and how we implement the passive fasting framework in detail. <coughs> and also, we will introduce the best practice or tips during our fasting activities. And in the last part, I will introduce uh, the tips and the best practice, how we exploit the vulnerabilities we have found <coughs> using the passive fasting framework and how we root it uh, <coughs> in OS X machine. OK, this is me. <coughs> I have worked about seven years about security, developing sand sandbox system, and also I'm focusing on Mac, Windows, and Android kernel, vulnerability, kernel vulnerabilities. <coughs> and this is my partner, Jack. He has worked uh, about 10 years about uh, insecurity, mainly focused on browser and document vulnerabilities, and also Mac, Windows, kernel, and also virtualization vulnerabilities. But Jack is <coughs> has broken his leg so badly, so he could not travel with me. <coughs> so just best, best wishes to Jack. So why we are here? Because of this, <coughs> here are the CVE lists, which we have, uh, we have been credits <coughs> using our uh, patio fuzzing framework. <coughs> About, uh, uh, the CVEs are from the Apple Winter, and uh, some are from the CDR, just like this. OK, um, <coughs> actually, we have used several of the vulnerabilities <coughs> to, to root OS X version uh, 10.11.3 version using these vulnerabilities. <coughs> In this part, I will introduce how we design and how we consider it our approach to implement our passive fuzzing framework. OK, before, before the first, <coughs> let's to see how other researchers <coughs> do fuzzing towards Mac OS kernel. The traditional way is that the researchers would uh, open the services which are exposed by our kit and pull the fast data to uh, the important API, such as uh, ESL Connect Commander and so forth. And the fast data <coughs> will transfer it to the kernel. And uh, if the kernel could not handle the fast data correctly, then the whole kernel would crash. This is uh, the active way to fast OS X kernel, <coughs> as we call it. However, there exists several condition dependency, as, uh, as, we, have, uh, as we have seen. For example, we have uh, category the condition dependency into three categories. The call sequence dependency, and the input dependency, and the timing dependency. For example, <coughs> for the call sequence dependency, the researcher must open, open the device, for example, our camera, uh, camera I.O. service first, and pour on the, pour on the service, service, then you can do your active fuzzing in a normal way. <coughs> and uh, if any of the initialization <coughs> failed, then the fuzzing activity would uh, fail in the early age. And also there exists the input data dependency. <coughs> Take the Apple HD engine, for example. <coughs> there exists one parameter which should, which must be allocated from the user mode, and uh, this buffer is uh, <coughs> transferred as a pointer to the kernel mode. So, if this buffer is not correctly allocated from the user mode, then any call to this uh, service would fail. Another is the timing dependency. <coughs> As we have found, there exist some services that uh, 
uh, says it's timely appear. For example, if you open one DMG file, then this service, IOHDIX devices out kernel service would appear in your OS X machine. <coughs> and another traditional way to, to, to hunt vulnerabilities of OS, OS X is code revealing. <coughs> So <coughs> this kind of code revealing would cause much effort <laughs> because there exists many, so many binaries which is close, close, close sourced and the researcher must reverse engineer the binary and select so many interfaces and so many service, services among the, among the, uh, the binaries. <coughs> so this kind of code revealing is not scalable and it will cost much effort and much time for the researcher. So what is my or what is our approach? <coughs> the key point for our approach is why not play? <coughs> why not play, why not, why don't we play games for bugs? Small games, for example, online, heavy online games you play and the more bounty of bug hunting you have got. Is it possible? Okay. It, the normal scenario for our funding is just like this. <coughs> then this is a real OS X machine and I have plant our petty fuzzing framework on the real machine here. And then we will launch any online games, for example, this one. <coughs> and uh, suddenly it will crash like this. You can see the cost stack log on the, on the screen here. So we can got the kernel dump of the OS X machine and we can reproduce the kernel crash and got a, get, get bounty from the CDI if you want. Okay, so how do we think of, how do we think of it? <coughs> uh, we, can we can compare this patio fuzzing framework with the dam poison. <coughs> uh, you can imagine that <coughs> uh, in a river, the water in the upstream will run down to the river dam and the, the river dam will intercept it, all, the <coughs> all the water from the upstream. And if we poison the dam, and the water will be poisoned. The pointed data will run down to the downstream of the river, then all the fish in the downstream will die. Okay, <coughs> so in our passive fuzzing, the downstream data is lack of the use mode data. The use mode data and the use mode exception <coughs> will all intercepted by hooking all important APIs such as SL Connect Commander and so forth. And the fast data by our hooker or by our, by our passive fuzzing framework <coughs> will be fast and delivered to the kernel mode user. The kernel mode user data is then, de is then delivered to the target driver. If the driver could not, could not handle the fast data correctly, then the whole kernel would crash, just like that all the fish in the downstream will die. <coughs> and the reproduction process is just, is just similar. When we reproduce the kernel, uh, kernel crash, it's just like that we will check the origin of the poison in the river dam. Okay, and then I will introduce the implementation in detail for you. First of all, let's take a, a glance of our normal routine. <coughs> this is a real picture of our fuzzing. In the left one, we call it a server machine, and the left one, the red one, we call it a client machine. <coughs> we use the uh, sandbox connection <coughs> to, debug, to debug the server machine using our client machine if the server machine crashes. <coughs> and uh, first, we will plant our passive uh, framework on the server machine here. And then we would launch any applications if you want. <coughs> and suddenly, because of our fuzzing, fuzzing activities, the server machine would crash, just like this. <coughs> it will show many cost X log 
on the screen. And then it will generate a call stack, a call, call dump in the server. And we could debug, debug the uh, server machine using a, a network or using a sandbox as you like. And the, and the genera generated call stack is transferred to the, to the, uh, to the client machine. So the client machine could get all the info which, can, which could reproduce the current crash easily. Okay, that's this uh, overview architecture. <coughs> this one is the, is the uh, this one from this point is, uh, uh, is, uh, is the kernel layer, and the upper one is the user mode layer. <coughs> and we put our passive fuzzing framework on the uh, kernel layer here. And the whole process would be like this. If the target application, for example, one online game <coughs> is executed on your machine, then all the data and all important APIs are hooked in, in kernel mode uh, as part of our passive fuzzing framework here, hooker. And this is the API list we will hook in our, use, in our kernel mode. And the intercepted data and the intercepted API are transferred first to our condition checker module. <coughs> if, if the if the data and the APIs are interesting for our researcher, then it could be sent out through contact matter to send to alert the researcher about which module is buggy or which interface uh, is so vulnerable and so sad. Then else, the fast uh, else, the temper module would fast the data from the user mode and transfer it to the original function here. Then the original function would uh, transfer the data to the target devices, for example, the sandbox, USB, HDA, and so forth, if you like. <coughs> and uh, probably the fast data <coughs> will cause the kernel, the whole kernel to crash. So this is a pseudo code for our passive fuzzing framework. <coughs> In the target application here, we would handle the parameters of transferred from the use mode. <coughs> and uh, we will first wet list the parameter and check the call stack info of the parameter and also check, check whether the parameter is in the blacklist. If the data <coughs> is, uh, should be fast as we design, then we should uh, re record the parameters in our, in our design and send them out. For example, uh, through network or through uh, or through MRAM, uh, non variable uh, non non uh, memory, and so forth. And then we will fast the data. The fast data will deliver it to the original API. Then the original API would call the target devices. Probably, uh, if you calling the original API with the fast data, the kernel would crash as we oppose. Okay. A more detail about our hook module and temper module. Actually, we have designed our hook module by inline hook in, in, in kernel mode. Because in this way, in, you can intercept all the, all the important APIs from all user processes, <coughs> just one too many design. Another, another design is uh, uh, about temper. <coughs> Actually, uh, the principle with fast data is that we should only fast data content, which could be controllable or accessible directly from the user mode. And we do not care about the data, which is inaccessible or incontrollable by the user. So for take the ESL connect call method, for example, <coughs> we would care about these three buffer contents, and we do not care about the size field of the parameter because the system OSX itself would check the validity of, uh, valid of the size parameter. Okay, let's take a, a real example. <coughs> Here is the real kernel crash cause stack which we, which we have found and which we have not reported to the vendor. And you can see that 
the upper the upper one is the bottom of the deck, and the lower one is the uh, uh, the upper one is top of the bottom, and the lower one is the bottom of the core stack. And we have uh, set the trampoline function here. Trampoline is our connect core method, and it will inline hook is our connect core method, which is the system API. And uh, this API will pass, uh, for example, connection of uh, uh, user client or user service, select, uh, selector function number uh, for the service, is, uh, is an integer, and also scalar, scalar, imp scalar input, uh, inbound input, OL input, and so forth. And also, there would be output related information. <coughs> Actually, so also hooker <coughs> we have set is layered uh, from, from smaller scope to bigger scope. For example, these two API is our connect it's IO connect core method, it's IO async method. It's re related to IO kit module, which is uh, related to driver interface. And uh, these two quit mapping in task, IO kit use client trap is related to OSX kernel itself. And uh, this one, these two, IPC, command to send and get, is related to match inter-process communication mechanism of OSX. And also, copy out is general in the whole kernel. Okay, let's take a glance of the all the hook in our source code. Actually, we have set all the hook by flag using uh, Boolean, Boolean using Boolean. And if you you can active the hooker by set the Boolean from false to true. It could uh, take take effect. That it would take effect. So another point is about condition tracker. So why do we introduce condition tracker? Uh, mainly, <coughs> the, bit, the basic reason for the condition tracker is to bypass all the noise because of our passive fuzzing. For example, uh, <coughs> for example, when during our passive fuzzing framework, it could interfere with all, all the normal activities uh, when you're using your OSX machine. <coughs> For example, it would cause black screen, but the kernel is active. It would cause harm of, the, of your kernel, but, uh, but it also do not crash. <coughs> and also, we will bypass the crashes. We have reproduced error. Another point is about it's about uh, hunting vulnerability. <coughs> so we can find uh, some, uh, some type of, some, some specific type of vulnerability uh, using condition checker. This part, I will talk it later. And how does the checker works? Actually, we have, uh, divide, we have designed the condition checker in different dimensions. <coughs> and we have introduced some, uh, some basic uh, syntax using our condition checker, for example, and all world match, white listing, black listing, and so forth. And also, <coughs> the condition checker will cover different property of uh, system API, which is our target. For example, the process, the module function, uh, and uh, also the data, the core stack, and the mis mis miscellaneous. About the process, <coughs> We could care about, uh, for example, the user ID. We can distinguish whether the current process is root or not. And uh, we can care about the process name. For, exa for example, Safari, <coughs> we can distinguish whether the current pro process could, uh, could be remotely controlled or whether the current process is sandbox evasion. And also, we would care about module name <coughs> and the function name. Uh, symbol name means function, fun function name and function address. This part is about uh, the offset uh, of the target function from the beginning of the function to the end of the function. Let's uh, take, uh, take uh, an example. <coughs> In this uh, white listing detail control, we would care about proc name, user ID, driver name, driver bundle name, driver class name, and the selector of the function, and so forth. For, for example, in this one, 
it, it means uh, uh, it is the Windows Server process, and we will bypass the ACTL surface uh, classes, and we will bypass this selector because if you call this selector, <coughs> you can cause the kernel crash. We have reproduced the crash. Uh, this is our index of crash. And also we will care about data and the cost stack. About data, we will care about whether the address is uh, uh, readable, writable, or accessible. And whether the data is read from the user or just uh, uh, read, from, uh, read from, uh, from kernel to user. <coughs> and whether the data address is in user mode or kernel mode. About the cost stack, we will care about the information of uh, uh, of the frame of any uh, uh, frame of the call stack. For example, we will care about the the, the return address in the call in the call frame, and the, the stack level from the top to to from bottom to the top in the call stack. Take an example. <coughs> this is the call stack. We will care about the routine name, routine address, and the the, the stack level layer. For example, the re if the return address is uh, among this uh, this function, and uh, if if this function is in in this function is in layer of uh, this this part in the whole call stack, then we will care about it. Uh, there are also some mis miscellaneous mis uh, check uh, condition checkers in our design. For example, uh, use client. <coughs> use client is specific uh, to our kit uh, fuzzy. For example, about the use client uh, related fuzzy, we would care about, uh, for example, uh, proc name, uh, driver name, function selector. For example, this is, uh, this is the class name of the ADPM use client, ADPM client. And this is the uh, function number <coughs> we, we, we're caring about. And this is the uh, match message inter-process communi communication part related condition checker. In this, in this condition checker, we would, uh, we would care about, uh, for example, ma match message ID, match, match message ID from, match message ID to. Actually, all the match ID could be divided into different parts, and we summarize them. Uh, here, for example, from this, from uh, the if the message is uh, among this range, it means that the message is about our kit subsystem, and if they are in this range, it means it, it is the Mac port subsystem range. <coughs> so we can distinguish all all the different parts of uh, our fuzzing target. <coughs> Another. Another point is about context, as I have, I have mentioned before. So what is context, and why do we introduce context? Actually, the context means the pattern accumulated during our fuzzing activities. <coughs> so it could uh, give more, much enlightenment to the researcher for code reading. For example, <coughs> it, could, uh, <coughs> it, could, it could lead to uh, tell, the, tell the researcher which module is, bug, is more buggy than the other module, and which interfaces or which APIs are more important or more vulnerable than the other APIs. So this is, uh, the context is not vulnerability itself, but it could indicate suspicious vulnerabilities. And actually, we have implemented the context mechanism in our condition checker. Take two examples. <coughs> About the context, uh, there are basically two kinds of context. The, the first one is about uh, is to indicate the memory corruption re related uh, context. Uh, take a, re take a re real example. If we have found in the kernel mode that an, an API call to the create mapping in task is called, and uh, one of the is parameter is used as a buffer size then we could uh, define this sequence of API calls or the scenario as the 
a typical overbuff uh, flow vulnerability. <coughs> and uh, if we find, uh, for example, from the output buffer of uh, uh, ESL connect method, one of these parameters can, uh, contains the prefix of uh, 3xffff, then it, it would be it would indicate you that the kernel mode use buffer address is leaked from user mode to from kernel mode to user mode. So, <coughs> by this kind of indication, we could get different kind of uh, kernel vulnerabilities. Okay, so far <coughs> during our passive activity, what best practice or or what <coughs> tips have we gotten? Then, in this part, I will introduce some of best practice and tips. Uh, it's about uh, fighting source, fighting stability, reproduction, automation, and a bit missing challenge. About the fighting process, uh, about the fighting source, <coughs> we recommend you to uh, download and uh, launch different kinds of applications from, from uh, for example, Apple Store, because different applications towards different uh, uh, hardware devices could generate different uh, data and exception to the system or to our passive fuzzing framework. Then you would, you would uh, have a high probability to get vulnerability. For example, you, you, could, you could download and run, for example, online games, fit Face time, USB divided, uh, USB related, Bluetooth, Wi Fi, or, or VMware, v VM, virtual machine, direct X related application from the from Apple Store. And also, you could uh, download different uh, suspicious applications from different channels here. And uh, we have found that uh, using the passive fighting framework, uh, some, one, some module is more or uh, is more vulnerable, is more vulnerable and more credible than the other module. For example, the graphic related module. Then we, uh, the other kind of module could not touch, could not be touched by our fuzzing. So you can complement the passive fuzzing by active fuzzing, just like this. Another point is about the fuzzing stability. <coughs> In our fuzzing, passive fuzzing, it will interfere interference with the normal use of your uh, of your OS X machine, so you should bypass using our uh, bypass the noise or interference using our condition checker. Another part is about reproduction. <coughs> uh, actually, we have record all the parameters before we fast data, and also we will. Uh, send out the whole core stack, uh, the, the whole kernel uh, core dump uh, if the cra crash happened from the, uh, uh, from the server machine to the client machine. This, uh, this is some real tips for you. For example, you could set up your dump server just like this, and you could uh, using the sandbot, uh, sandbot wire to connect your server and uh, client machine here. To make all the passive fuzzing framework uh, automation, we, sh uh, we recommend you can put uh, your fuzzing framework uh, in, into a guest, guest OS machine. <coughs> For example, uh, you can put them in VMware Fusion and QMU and so, so like that. And you can create one initialized snapshot. <coughs> and then you could uh, run, from, run your passive working from this snapshot. And if the guest OS crashes, you can get the whole kernel dump for your reproduction, and then you can restore the initial initial snapshot. Uh, some mis miscellaneous tricks. Uh, uh, actually, <coughs> maybe you could, uh, um, for example, open some specific devices and initialize the devices into the normal state, and then suddenly you can uh, plant your passive fuzzing framework, and then 
the more probably pr probability you will get is the kernel crash. Okay, the last part we will introduce how we exploit the OSX machine with the vulnerabilities that we have found. First of all, I will introduce some security mitigation, which is introduced uh, by OSX latest version, SM, uh, SIP, uh, kernel, kernel address layout, uh, uh, randomization, super mode, uh, supervised mode access prevention, and uh, uh, supervised mode execution prevention. This, uh, these features are implemented in the 20 and 22 bits of CR4 register here. Uh, actually, we can, we, can, we can ignore SIP because this is uh, irre irrelevant to uh, OSX uh, kernel root. We would care about uh, KLSR as, as SMAP, SMEP. To bypass SM, actually we have no vulnerability to bypass the uh, uh, kernel address randomization. We just use the old vulnerability here. It could leak the key slides of the text segment in the, uh, in the kernel mode to, to user mode. And we have found the vulnerability of, uh, of this in this particular image. It could uh, leak the kernel heap address from the kernel mode to user mode. Using this vulnerability, we could bypass SMAP access prevention. And also we could get uh, an any call exception here, vulnerability in this image module. <coughs> Using this vulnerability, we could control the EIP or RIP register. And we could uh, lead the ex execution to the RLP chain. In this RLP chain, we will disable the R R4, uh, CR, CR4 register to shut down SMAP and S SMEP. Then the payload in the user mode could be executed in the, kern in the kernel directly. And also, uh, the, 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 the exploit process is related to heap spray. Uh, <coughs> This, there are some tips you, uh, during heap spray. Actually, um, there is uh, some traditional way to use OS, OS, OS unserialized API to allocation and occupy kernel buffer, uh, kernel buffer in kernel mode. <coughs> this way is introduced by Stephen, Stephen Isser in 2012. Actually, uh, this API would handle an XML uh, lack, lackable uh, input buffer. The key, the, uh, the, the key and the value, the value is the array, and the array is uh, composed of several data. It's the OS data. So <coughs> uh, this data could be allocated in the kernel mode, and uh, the format of the uh, kernel mode data is, uh, is exactly predictable. However, <coughs> using this API, have uh, using this API directly would fail to uh, to to heap spread because usually there followed an OS object release to the to the buffer you have uh, ever allocated. So in most cases, if you call call the wrapper API of OS unserialized, <coughs> it would then allocate the buffer first and then release it, so there, there is no effect. <coughs> so we should uh, must find a wrapper API which would just allocate kernel buffer in kernel mode, but it would uh, not freeze the buffer in this cycle of API call. We have found the API call uh, about the IO registry, IO registry component of OS X. Actually, IO that is the component is similar to um, device manager uh, in, in in Windows, and uh, always ha always we have a cache, and we have found the cache. So we have found that this kind of a, uh, uh, the wrapper, uh, secure sleep system options, which is uh, the service of IO IOMP root domain about select seven. And if you call it, 
in the use mode just like this, then it would uh, allocate the kernel buffer in the kernel mode. That is the exploit process in the over, uh, overview. At the first step, here, we could, we could, we could use uh, uh, the vulnerability to, uh, to bypass the KLSR to get the kernel, uh, kernel uh, text address and uh, build up our payload using uh, these APIs like this. And then we would, we would use our one, uh, this is vulnerability one, and then we would use uh, the vulnerability we have found. This is vulnerability two. It will, would leak the kernel buffer here, our command. It will leak the address in the kernel mode to the user mode. <coughs> and then we, we would occupy uh, the, we, we would, then we would release phrase our command buffer here. And then we, we would uh, pip spray the our command with our new OS data. The OS data contains uh, uh, specially defined RP chain and the specially defined stack pervert like this. <coughs> and finally, we will use our third vulnerability to execute the leak address plus 0, uh, 0650 uh, uh, offset. Then it would call to the stack pervert. The stack pervert would uh, change, the, change the stack here, RP chain. RP chain would then first uh, disable the 20 and the 21 bits of CR4 register. So, uh, so to close SMAP and SMEP. And, and finally, we could call the payload in the mode, user mode directly. Okay, let's see, see it. See the whole process from a different view. Uh, <coughs> first, we will build up our payload in the user mode, which will use the leaked address of the KLSR. And then, we would allocate, we would uh, uh, normally allocate uh, an IO, com IO command buffer in, uh, in the kernel mode. And we use vulnerability two to leak uh, the heap address of this uh, object. And then we will free, free the IO, IO, command, IO command buffer and occupy it using OS data. The OS data contains such data which are specially defined which are specially designed, like this. Stack power to RP chain and the payload. And then we use the third vulnerability, which would call, which is any call uh, exception vulnerability. Then it would call to leak address plus uh, offset, which would trigger stack power. Stack power would change the stack to our RP chain, R RP chain buffer, and the RP chain, RP chain buffer would then uh, disable SMAP, SMEP using RP get it. And then it would finally call payload, which is uh, layered in the user mode. Okay, let's see the demo video. First, we could see that we are not root. ID, ID command, we could see that the user ID is not zero. And then we could open any DMD file so, so that the IOHDIX uh, service could appear in your OSX machine. And then we use our, uh, we launch up our exploit application. In this application, it would use three vulnerabilities. Take a moment. And finally, we could see that we are root. We could see the ID is zero. Okay, thank you. This is my last page of my PPT.